we're going to be looking at the cardiac cycle using Vigor's diagram. All right. So let's look at Vigor's diagram. This speaks to Vigor's diagram right here, or Vigor's diagram. And we're going to be specifically looking at pressure in this one. All right. So we start off with atrial systole. Now, systole, if we could remember, systole speaks about contraction. Right, so the atrial systole has been marked there, right? And this really speaks about the contraction of the atria. So as the atria starts to contract, we're gonna see an increase in pressure there. All right, we're gonna see an increase in pressure, right? And right, that pressure will continue to increase. All right, so we're seeing that there's gonna be an increase in pressure on the atria as the atria contracts pumping blood or moving blood towards the ventricles right so if the ventricular pressure now becomes greater than atrial pressure right remember that we're increasing the volume in the ventricles so ventricular pressure will start to rise when that pressure becomes greater than the atrial pressure then we see now that something will change right so ventricular pressure if it's greater then we're gonna have the atrioventricular valves, right? And we know what the atrioventricular valves are. They, they will close. And when they close, they create the lub sound, right? So when these valves shut, they create S1, all right? So we should be able to see S1 there, all right? So we see that there. For the next step, we're gonna have what we call ventricular systole. In ventricular systole, we have what we call isometric contraction first, right? So let's look at this, right? The pressure of the ventricle will really rise. And as the ventricles start to contract and push in, right? The ventricular pressure will just, you know, continue to rise, right? Now, remember here that it's isovolumetric and that means that all the valves connecting to the ventricles all the valves are closed right but the ventricle per, well, then it, well the ventricles will continue to contract on themselves and increase the pressure within the ventricles and that's why it's called isovolumetric meaning that if the valves are closed there's no change to volume. No blood is coming from the atria. No blood is leaving the ventricle. So it's isovolumetric. Iso meaning same. Volumetric speaking to volume. Right? And it... Sorry, volumic. Why well, am I calling about volumetric? Volumic. Right? Um, contraction there. Alright? Now, what happens here now? Right? Arterial pressure will become equal to ventricular pressure right arterial pressure will become equal to ventricular pressure all right so we notice that so arterial pressure is a pressure within the arteries most notably in the aorta right we really speaking about aortic pressure mostly right so when that that will actually become equal right all right so we see here that it will become equal right here right in that part of the diagram all right so it will become equal kind of right right there and what tends to happen is that when the ventricular pressure gets greater than aortic pressure the aortic valves will now open so you can see that on the diagram here the valves will open when they become the same and when these valves open we're gonna see here that blood is gonna start to move from the ventricles to the aorta, all right, to the arteries. So remember to know, it's important to know that blood moves from an area of higher pressure to a lower pressure in this area, right? Or in this topic. So blood will actually start to push from the ventricles into the different arteries, into the aorta to be specific, right? Or into the pulmonary artery. So from the ventricles to the arteries. Then after that, we're gonna look at ventricular systole systole remember that we're still talking about ventricular systole we just talked about isometric volume um isomot isovolume volumic sorry contraction right so that is just a part of ventricular systole now ventricular systole will start will continue right so 
the ventricles are are constantly are continuing to contract and when the aortic valves open we know that ejection will start to occur so ventricular pressure will continue to rise as blood is ejected out of the ventricles right through the different pass pathways right so we know now that the blood in the ventricles won't stay forever so as the blood shifts and move from the ventricle to the aorta right in this case then the ven then arterial pressure or aortic pressure will increase now note now that blood will start that the blood will start to leave the aorta and leave the leave the ventricles right so blood will move from the ventricle to the aorta and from the aorta to the rest of the body now the pressure will start to decrease in both so let's look at that so around here the pressure will start to decrease so know that the curve starts to decrease here the pressure will start to decrease in both and this allows for a shift right so remember that blood is leaving the art the main arteries right going to the rest of the body blood is leaving the arteries going into capillary bed beds and blood is now moving into the veins so the arteries are losing the blood as well as the ventricles have are losing the blood right remember that the blood has to move so it won't stay there forever now once the blood moves then the pressure will fall but ventricular pressure will fall below arterial pressure and this will allow the aortic valve to slam shut when the aortic valve slams shut and the semilunar valves slam shut right we have all well, the pulmonary semilunar valves slam shut we have the first heart zone well the second heart zone the dub right so we can make note of that we have the dub forming right so remember the first heart zone was formed from the art the atrioventricular valve slamming shut but the second heart zone being formed from the aortic valve and the pulmonary right semilunar valve slamming shut now that is all ventricular systole if we look at diastole you now diastole refers to relaxation right we have a decrease in pressure so diastole usually is marked with an with a far decrease in pressure right so pressure decreases at an increasing rate all right so here now the first part of diastole would be isovolumetric relaxation right so let's note this right remember what isovolumetric speaks to all of the valves are gonna be closed the aortic and the mitral valves will be closed right and the atrioventricular valves will be closed remember you know if the pressure in the atrium well sorry in the ventricle falls below that in the artery then the well the valves will slam shut so we see here we're going to see something here. The ventricular pressure, right, will remain the same while the ventricle relaxes. That's why we get isovolumetric relaxation. Will remain the same mostly, right? We got to note that. And this is because all the valves are shut. Same thing in isovolumetric contraction, but this is diastole. So it's isovolumetric or volumic um, relaxation, right? now after a while no the ventricular pressure will actually be we have ventricular pressure starting to decrease ventricular pressure will actually be a little bit higher than well a little bit lower than that of um well it's gonna be higher for this case right higher than atrial pressure let's talk about that first right that would mean that some of the valves will open All right i think there is an issue here let me fix this i think there's an issue here the ventricular pressure would actually be lower all right i made the sign different right so ventricular pressure will actually be lower than the atrial pressure right then the mitral valves will open now note that while we're gonna have isovolumetric relaxation blood is still entering from the vena ca the vena cave right into the atrium and blood is still coming from the pulmonary veins right towards the atriums right or the atria so blood is moving into the atria and that means that if blood is continuously filling the atria atrial pressure will increase 
right and this is known as diastolic filling right so the the entire cycle will start to to continue so if we look at this diagram it would be the same thing here now let me just do a brief explanation of the diagram right so here we have systole right we are uh, we are gonna have a arterial systole right so let's look at this arterial systole they are the blood will the atrium right atrial systole the the atria will actually start to contract right increasing volume in the atria right well increasing pressure in the atria and then the volume of blood will actually move to the ventricle when the pressure of the ventricle increases over that of the atrial pressure we are gonna have the mitral valves closing right and then we're gonna have the mitral valves closed so the mitral valve is closed and remember the aortic valve is not open as yet so we're gonna see that there's gonna be a real increase in isovolumetric contraction here now while when the ventricular pressure exceeds that of aortic pressure now we're gonna see here that the aortic valves will now open, sending blood through in ejection. So blood is ejected from the heart, right? So ventricular pressure will continue to increase. But after a while now, blood is going to be lost. So the pressure will start to decrease, right? And the pressure of the ventricles, right? And the aorta will actually be similar. And the arteries that we're talking about, right? Will actually be the same. Now ventricular pressure will start to drop now. When it drops beneath that of aortic pressure, then we're going to see that the aortic valves will now close. Right? So the valves will now close. And since both valves are now closed again, we're going to have an isovolumic rea um, relation. Right? But this is now relaxation. So we have entered diastole, relaxation. Now the volume will start to drop immensely. It will start to drop. Right, and while it's dropping, we know we have to note that blood is now passively flowing from the vena cava, whether it be superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Both vena cava are going to be contributing some amount the blood back to the back to the left atria, or well, atrium, and then from the lungs brings oxygenated blood to the right atrium right so there's gonna be diastolic filling right and once ventricular pressure drops below that of a of the atrial pressures right because we know that atrial pressure is going to be increasing because of filling right then we're going to have the mitral valve opening allowing blood to start flowing back into the ventricle right and this will have this will be passive Right, so remember it's gonna be passive. So it's gonna be a rapid inflow, it's gonna be passive, and then we're gonna have diastasis, meaning that it's remember it's gonna just be passive flow until right we're gonna have contraction of the atria, right, within atrial systole, and everything will happen again and again and again. So this is just showing one cardiac cycle with relation to pressure, reading Wigger's diagram.